Yo, everybody, welcome back. This is Steven with Bama Salt Water Fishing. We're sitting out on a reef out here in the Gulf of Mexico. It's about 70 foot deep, give or take, and we're gonna be fishing with some squid. So I just have a little double drop, high, low rig, chicken rig, whatever you wanna call it. I call it a reef fishing rig. It's for trigger fish, bee liners, mangrove snapper. These are five alt circle hooks on each dropper loop with 30 pound leader and a four ounce bank sinker. These are all ready to go tied up on BamaSaltwater.com if you wanna check them out and get you some. Today I'm throwing this on a Daiwa Saltus MQ. This is an 8,000 size reel, 40 pound braid and a Star Plasma 2, seven foot heavy power rod. Let's prep our bait and drop it down and see what we can catch. So all I've done today is go to the tackle shop and buy this quart of squid. These are whole squid. See, check it out. And the first thing I wanna do is take these tentacles. Those are my favorite part to catch fish with. So I'm gonna set those aside. We want small pieces. Most of these fish we're after today have smaller mouths. So I'm gonna take this sore bait knife, this is a five inch, and open this squid up. We're gonna make it flat as we can, just like that. And what I do is I take all this stuff and toss it overboard as some chum. Now, if you've never seen a squid's backbone before, this is it. I believe someone had mentioned it's called a quill, which makes sense. It kind of feels like a plastic straw, but it's not plastic. That's the squid's backbone, which they're not really bones, but just a colloquial term. Pretty cool. So now that we chum the water a little bit with that, we have a nice flat piece of squid, and I'm just gonna cut it up into strips. About one inch wide. See, there's a nice squid strip, and I'm gonna cut that one in half even more. So see, I have two pieces of squid right there. That's about the size you want for these type of fish. And you can get a lot of bait out of one whole squid. Now they do sell squid strips separately, but I like taking the whole squid and doing it this way a little bit better. All I'm gonna do with that tentacle is take my circle hook and just run it straight through one time, just like that. See, that's ready to go. I have another hook down on the bottom, Let's put that other tentacle down there. Once again, boom. And we're baited up, ready to go just like that. Doesn't take much to do some simple fishing. So let's go ahead, drop this down and see what we can catch. I'm down in some hard bottom. I am marking some fish. There's a little bit of relief there. Check that out. That's what we want to see. We can keep trigger fish. We can keep bee liners, mangrove snapper. Really the only thing we can't keep right now are amberjack and red snapper and certain grouper species. But that four ounce weights down on the bottom, all I did was just reel in my slack so my bait's right below me and we're already getting a nibble. All right, we have our first fish on. Let's find out what this is gonna be. Circle hooks, all you do is just start reeling, put some pressure on the line. Majority of the time they'll hook themselves. And we have a nasty remora. <laughs> That's our first fish. Not really a fish I intended to catch, but it is a fish nevertheless. These are kind of cool. They stick on sharks, big rays, cobia, any big fish. But see, they have that sucker on their head. Look, these things will even stick to your arm. See how he's kind of stuck there? It's time to let him go. <laughs> that was cool. Those are kind of pests, but at least that's a fish nevertheless. You never know what you're going to pull up out here. I've pulled up octopus before. Small grouper, bunch of different stuff down there. We're getting another nibble. All right, we have our first decent feeling fish on. On that whole squid body, that didn't take long, dang. All right. <laughs> Typically I like fishing with real light tackle, but when you have dolphin and sharks and the reef to contend with and I plan on keeping fish, I'm using this heavy setup. So we're gonna bring this up. I was hoping it was a big trigger fish, but this is a red snapper, an American red snapper. Pretty little thing. That would be a keeper in the season, but it's not in season. There's a lot of them out here. Pretty thing, let's get them back. We're in pretty shallow water. He doesn't need venting. There you go, straight down to the bottom. He didn't suffer from any bear trauma, which is usually when their stomach's protruding because their swim bladder's so full from coming in deep, deep water. You need to use a descending device or a venting tool, which I have both, and you're required to have at least one on board along with your D-hooker when reef fishing and along with using non-stainless circle hooks. I'm glad he spit up my squid. I get to reuse it. So one remora, 
one American red snapper. Mm. There we go. Mm. A hard puller. There. <laughs> Very hard fighter. Mm. It's kind of circling up. I don't know. That might be our fish we're after. Nope. Another red. Big old red snapper too. Look at that. I'm tired of feeding dolphin. Well, I'm catching nothing but a bunch of red snapper here. The bottlenose dolphin starts showing up. I don't want to feed them. I'm going to move a little bit deeper. So I just came out to much deeper water, 112 foot. But look at that huge structure. Lots of marks up on top. Big old structure down there. I know we're going to catch something. Now we're baited back up again with some of this nasty, stinky squid. See what happens. I'm getting a nibble. We have a fish on in the deeper water. There's usually a lot of bee liners and mangrove snapper that sit on this spot. Let's get them up. Oh yeah. First fish to keep on deck. This is a bee liner, also named a vermilion snapper. They're very, very good to eat. There's no open or closed season on them, and they only have to be 10 inches to land. You're allowed 10 per person. Look at that thing. They're beautiful little things. They got small mouths, but is that a phenomenal eating and tasting fish? Spike them, bleed them out, and throw them in the cooler. So he's in the cooler, and I got my bait back from him. That's what I like right there. <laughs> Let's get it back down. Usually when you catch one of those, there's gonna be a whole bunch with it. Okay. We just had something nice. Just grab it and run with it. We're gonna bring this up. Feels a little big. If it's a beeliner, it's a big one. But I've also doubled up on them before too, since this has two baits down there. Double your chances of getting a fish. Mm. See what this is. What are you? I see you. You're not gonna believe this. <laughs> Can't believe it. I'm gonna show you all this because this is dumb. I just caught a hardhead catfish. I'm 20 miles offshore and catch a big old hardhead catfish. And his belly's fat. He's got barotrauma. Can't stand these things, but I do like to respect nature, so he's gonna go back. Can't believe I just caught the trashiest saltwater fish of all time is a hardhead catfish. That is crazy. Cobia do like eating them when they're smaller, and a lot of other fish will eat them too, but cobia especially, or ling, they like to eat smaller hardheads and sail cats. You can find them in their bellies. But this one's pretty big. He's been living a good life down there. Slimy, nasty things. Now I've cooked a saltwater catfish, a few of them. The sail cat or the gaff top sail catfish. Those are actually not bad. The hard head's a little bit different. They're very mushy. Their fins hurt. They don't even look cool. At least the sail cats look cool. Hopefully we don't catch another junk fish. <laughs> but a fish is a fish. It's fun either way. There's a fish. That might be our bee liner. It's not pulling any drag, so it's, it's something kind of small. I hope it's a bee liner or a sand perch. Those things are good too. But we're gonna get it up. This one I had all the way down at the bottom. Oh yeah, look how pretty these things are. Super red, they got those bright red eyes. They're very easy to distinguish against the red snapper too, especially because their mouth, they have little teeth that you can actually touch if you want to. They are kind of pokey, but you wouldn't ever stick your finger in a red snapper. And you don't really want to do it on these, but I'm gonna measure him and if he keeps, he's going in the cooler on the squid. So now I have two bee liners. At least that's something to take home. I got my bait back, luckily. Squid's a tough material too, it toughens up. All right. We got another one hooked up. Hopefully it's a bigger bee liner, trigger fish, mangrove. Hopefully it's one of them things. 
<laughs> Something we can keep. Oh man, that's a stud bee liner. Wow. <laughs> Y'all, that's exactly what I came out here for. That is a big old bee liner or, or vermilion snapper. Having a cooler full of those is awesome. Look at that thing. I was about to move spots again, but man, if there's a whole school of these things down there, that's what we want. We don't want to have to measure them. We want them to be for sure keepers. What an awesome catch. So those things aren't the biggest fish in the water, but man, do they taste delicious. And it's something you can keep year round that anyone can do if you have a way of getting out here. He gave me some squid back and I'm just gonna throw that back on the hook. See if we can get another one that size. Mm. There's another one. I hope it's another one of those big vermilion snapper. Those are awesome. Love catching them that big. Mm. He's kind of fighting back. Oh yeah, got a little bit of weight to it. Can't see him. There we go. That's what I'm after. That's it right there. You gotta love it. He's gonna go in the cooler. I know y'all love seeing fish being kept on the channel. I do a lot of catch and release, but when you come out here, spend the gas money, bait, and pull these fish out from their home, and they taste so good, you bet I'm gonna throw it in the coolers. It's March, beautiful weather, and we're catching fish to keep. So there's another squid baited up. Let's get them back down. I think I found some bee liners. Something's pecking at it. Oh, they tried grabbing it. It's a pretty big bait down there. They have small mouths, but you throw a big bait, typically you're gonna catch some bigger ones. Mm. There it is. <laughs> oh, something with a little more power to it. It actually wants to fight back. We're gonna get them up. It'd be nice if it was that little two pound bee liner. Nope, that's a red snapper. See, they definitely look different than the bee liners the more you look at them and the more you see. They're much wider body. They're not as red. Their mouth shape is different. He would be a keeper if the season was in, but see you buddy. Well, that's why he fought a little harder because it was a red snapper. Mm. Another fish. Got some weight to it. Come on now. <laughs> you gotta love this type of fishing. You get bites all the time. Oh man. Yeah. There's another one of them stud bee liners. Look at that. Big old fish. That's what I'm talking about. He is for sure going home with us. That's a good one right there. That's why I didn't leave yet because I know these are down there. I really haven't been catching that many red snapper. I caught the one I just showed you, but dang, look at the tail on that sucker. That's a good one. We got a tail. Mm. And just like that, it's another fish. Tell me, once you get one fired up, normally the others will follow suit. Now when that water gets warmer, I actually come and chum these things up and sight fish for them. But this is another nice bee liner. Not quite the stud that we caught before, but that's a nice average size bee liner. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. This is a ruby red lips. I'll show you why. These are edible, there's no size limit on them. They make really good amberjack and grouper bait. But see why they call them ruby red lips? Look at that, they have a big old mouth and it's got that red inside. Pretty cool fish, I haven't caught one today. So add that to the species list and he goes back. Strong the current is today. See my squid down there? It looks like it's swimming, it looks alive. That's why I think it works so well. Has a nice scent to it. So I'm gonna have to drop down this jig down here. Mm. Mm. Golly! Wow! Mm. Something smacked that jig. Gosh! Mm. Come on. 
put the slow pitch rod to work. Wow, that's insane. What a hard fighter. Now these slow pitch rods look real light and that's because they are, but they're designed that way. The rod really bends and flexes so to impart some really good action onto your jigs. A little bit different than your vertical high speed jigging. Shot. And that's a jack. <laughs> there we go. Decent one at that. Y'all, that's a good one. <laughs> These are out of season too, but he did eat that jig. These are your amber jack. They get a lot bigger than this, but even this size fights like crazy. It's insane. So he's gonna go back real quick. But the jacks, they're very easy. You just kind of jet them down, rushes the water through its gills, and he's gone. As long as you get them up fast. I don't think I want another jack, but I would like to see what other kind of bottom species are hanging around that will eat the jig. Well, like I was saying, these rods are very, very light. They look like a bass rod but they're designed that way for a reason. It really imparts some good action onto that jig. And then it allows you to have that parabolic bend where that rod you notice is bent over double. And then you can pump it and fight the fish up with the reel. Now on these jigs, typically you tie onto that solid ring because a lot of them are gonna have a split ring, couple hooks, or on some of them you tie to this side and you tie a little loop knot. But if you ever have one like this, on most butterfly jigs, you wanna to tie to that solid ring. Cause if this weight comes off, you're still attached to that fish with the hook. Cause that's what the hook's attached to. Or if your split ring stretches out, you'll still have the fish. I've used up all of my squid. I'm actually gonna put on some fish bites. These are the fish and chunks in the squid flavor. These are a lot bigger than the ones that you would typically use for surf fishing. Let's see if we can catch something on them. Okay, so our fish bites is down there. It's gonna slowly dissolve and get that scent out. <laughs> is that what we need? It is a trigger fish on the fish bites. Is it gonna be a keeper? Oh man, that one might not keep. It might keep, I don't know. We gotta measure it but they love this stuff. They have to be 15 inches from the tip of their mouth to the middle of their tail or the fork in their tail. 14 inch fish, he's gotta go back, but I did catch one, so here we go. He just needed to be one more inch. Well, they're going the other way. Instead of getting bigger, it got a little smaller. <laughs> but he's down there. Gonna get a nice healthy release on him. There we go. I got some nasty teeth. Whew. Mm. There we go. On the jig. Mm. I love jigging. Incredibly fun. What do we have? Oh! We have a lane snapper. That's a keeper lane. Those are very good to eat. They only have to be eight inches. So he definitely makes it really nice. Yellow stripes going through. Very good eating. He's gonna go in the cooler with us as well and join his other buddies. I tied on a different jig. This is a Daiwa Saltiga FK jig. It's 140 gram in the orange and glow color. Flying fish. Flying fish. I don't know what's chasing it. Something wise, throw that squid out here. Yeah, that was neat. Oh, I have something on the squid. Mm. I threw out towards that flying fish with that Nomad Vertrex, and now I have something. What are you? Let's see. Is that a cobia? Nope, just a big remora. Okay, remember how I said this remora can get bigger? There's 
a decent one. <laughs> These are crappy fish. I already showed you how they stick to things, so I'm gonna get this squid tracks out and get this slimy joker back. They're so slimy. There we go. I think they're kind of cool though. <laughs> you gotta have fun fishing. You know, when you go out every day like I do, you don't have to go out and try hard and stress yourself to get a target species. At least that's what I tell myself. <laughs> You just go out, enjoy this nature like this, enjoy the fight. It's fun, no matter what you catch. Now, there are a lot of times where I go out with a specific goal, but today I was just go out. If I catch a legal trigger, hey, try to get some bee liners, which I did, so I'm happy with that. And uh, the rest is just for fun. Mm. 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 Thought I was hung up for a second. Mm. Mm. What is that? Mm. Mm. That's got to be huge. Probably a big snapper. Mm. I thought I was hung up on the bottom. Uh. Uh. Come on. Woo! That was awesome. Literally, I thought I was stuck on the reef until it started fighting back. Now, I'm in the battle with the giant here mm. that I just hope I can get my eyes on. That's all I ask for now. I don't even know what it is. I just know it took off like crazy. Mm. I just want to get to my top shot. Mm. It didn't want to come up. <laughs> All that line I just got back. Mm. That's insane. Y'all, I hope you're excited and have as much anxiety as I do right now about this. Because I don't know what it is. There's my top shot. Mm. Oh, I just saw it. What is that? Shark. It's a shark. Really? Give me my jig back, you big dummy. That's what it was. I'm going to try to get my jig back. That's not going to be very fun. I need that jig. <laughs> Got my little handy dandy D hooker. I don't like dealing with these things by myself because they're tough. They're a tough critter. He has a little remora on him. What kind of shark are you? A black nose? Kind of looks like a black nose shark. <clears throat> That's my, not what I look forward to here. <clears throat> Give me my jig. <laughs> it's right there. He's got two hooks in him. <clears throat> Get his head out. <laughs> well, I guess we're gonna bring him on deck anyway. <laughs> well, I got him on deck. Not what I wanted to do, but I need my jig back and I wanna make sure he's left without any hooks in him as well. <clears throat> okay on top of his head and I see there we go got my jig back got the hook out of this beauty pretty little critter and we're gonna show you to the camera and let you go <laughs> got him there we go y'all check this thing out I'm glad I was able to get my jig back and get the hook out of this cool little joker I want to get him back as quick as I can now that I showed him to the camera here we go get out of here big dummy That was tough. Did not expect that to be honest, which there's always expect the unexpected when fishing saltwater. But that's why I like throwing a jig. I've caught so much stuff on these jigs, but I was glad I was able to get that back. That little Daiwa jig strong. And my leader what didn't get in his mouth. I'm impressed. Woo. All right. 
up. Awesome. Springtime, early spring, Gulf of Mexico. Finally got some cold weather to get out. It is beautiful. Thank you, Lord, for putting all this there for us. It's awesome. And then when storms come through, it can be complete opposite. <laughs> so let's make our way back. I'll see y'all back at the ramp. Man, it is dark. I'm cleaned up. I got Ono. Ono, oh what's up, buddy? Oh, you're a good boy. You know, some of those fish I caught today were bigger than you are, buddy. If you haven't met Ono, we have two dogs. We have Bobo, who's inside sleeping. He's our Shih Tzu. And then Ono is our newest puppy. And he's a little Australian Shepherd mixed with the mini Australian Shepherd. And he likes to get into trouble. <laughs> are you a good boy? Huh? Are you going to go fishing with us when you get bigger? I think you are. Well, y'all, I hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed these longer videos. I have been posting some shorts. That's not the end to longer videos. Trust me. Those are just highlights from previous videos I've done just to help you get through the day and get through the week while I'm editing and filming and all that to get these long episodes for you. I'm sure some of y'all have noticed that. I appreciate each and every one of y'all for watching. Smash that subscribe button. Amazing. Absolutely amazing to see the growth of the channel. So cool. And I cannot wait to continue growing with y'all. 100,000 is not the end. It's just a stepping stone towards being able to share and teach fishing to everyone. So we'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. As always, we'll see you later. <gasps> what you doing, buddy? Oh, he's fast. He's fast. <laughs> he's quick, isn't he? <laughs> he doesn't want to be caught. There you go, buddy. We gone. <laughs>